Tonight, we're broadcasting live aboard the USS Nimitz. And while we can't give you our exact location, we can tell you we are here in the Western Pacific Ocean. We landed here just moments ago after boarding a C-2 Greyhound in Guam and landing on the deck of this massive aircraft carrier that stretches nearly 1,100 feet long. That's more than three football fields. And about this exact location on the ship, it's called Vultures Row. It is a viewing platform high above the flight deck where the crew and others can observe the flight operations below. Today, the world is marking one year in the war in Ukraine, when Russia unleashed the largest ground invasion in Europe since World War II. We've got reports tonight from Ukraine with CBS's Charlie Daggett and from the Pentagon with CBS's David Martin, who takes an in-depth look at the billions of dollars in military aid for Ukraine. All this as the U.S. prepares for a potential conflict with China. Tonight, the U.S. is confirming that they're going to be sending additional troops to Taiwan. That is big news. It is historic because the troops will deploy to the crucial island to help build out a training program amid increasing tensions with China. It's here in the Western Pacific, where America's naval power is on full display. The USS Nimitz with more than 60 planes and 5,000 sailors. Guam is where we took off from this morning. It is considered the tip of the spear, one part of the Marianas, a strategic location used during World War II to launch the bombs that forced Japan to surrender. Today, Guam houses three military bases, Air Force, Navy, and now a new home to 5,000 Marines, the first new U.S. military base in 70 years. Part of a new buildup in the region. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announcing earlier this month the U.S. will expand its military presence in the Philippines. That's just part of our efforts to modernize our alliance. And these efforts are especially important as the People's Republic of China continues to advance its illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. Take a look at America's military might, from Guam to Japan to the Philippines. The Chinese foreign minister complaining again this week that it's all an effort to contain China and prevent it from controlling Taiwan. Democracies of the world will stand guard over freedom today, tomorrow, and forever. China and Russia declared just over a year ago a no-limits friendship. Presidents Xi and Putin set to meet again soon. These pictures show war games and joint naval drills involving China and Russia happening right now. How closely is Xi Jinping and China watching the war in Ukraine? Xi Jinping is likely watching the war in Ukraine very closely because it has both economic implications for China, diplomatic implications for China, and military implications for China. Toshi Yoshihara has spent his career studying the Chinese Navy. He says Xi Jinping is learning lessons as the Chinese president considers invading Taiwan. The first is the nuclear saber rattling that Putin engaged in at the outset of the conflict. Now, while Putin's uh, nuclear threats did not stop the West from helping Ukraine, I think it was clear that the United States and its NATO allies were very cautious, took Putin's words seriously. And so Xi Jinping might learn that it might be to China's benefit to similarly engage in early nuclear threats. Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher is a Marine veteran and chairs the new House committee focused on China. One of the lessons of Ukraine is that when dictators tell you they're going to do something, you should pay attention. President Biden has pledged to defend Taiwan, setting the U.S. and China up for a possible conflict this decade. If this thing really escalated into a conflict between our navies, that would entail a level of destruction and death that we haven't seen for a long, long time. 